how's it going everybody? So today we are going to be throwing some of this in some resin. Right here we have tons of colorful wool. <laughs> it's dyed wool and it's really pretty. So for wool you can just like pull and blend and you can like twist it to make like cool effects. There's just a little bit of something. You can throw it in the resin just like that. This is the technique that I like to do, kind of gives it a marble look, marbled circus kind of thing. I'm really lucky because my mother actually owns a wool mill, so I have so much access to as much wool, raw wool, raw dyed wool. So I'm really lucky that I get to use and play with as many colors as I want and blend as much as I want, and it's like, it's really satisfying. So I had a lot of options to to go through and I made a few things with wool. So I started off with making this little sheep mold. I had a salt and pepper shaker so I made one of these guys. Um, I made it really thin because I knew I wasn't going to use it very often. I have this little green guy, green and yellow wool. So I wanted to show you the uh, really cool effects that you can get with wool in resin. First of all, when it gets wet, it gets like so much darker and when you put it in resin, it's like permanently wet. So it like gets a really dark, rich color and I like it so much. So here's one of the little guys that I made. One big thing about resin is that you have to dip it first before putting it in the mold or else it will just not absorb properly. You really have to saturate it in resin before putting it in your mold. And I think it's like a really unique and stunning effect. Here's another little sheepy that I made. So in this one, I used pink and blue, and then I used some dark blue as well. I think they're pretty adorable. Um, I also made some coasters. So in this one, we have green and pink wool. So you can see like a lot of little air bubbles trapped in there. It's tricky because you have to like make sure the air bubbles don't ruin the piece, but also it just like, it captures a lot of little tiny pieces in the wool and you can see all those fibers. This is one that I tried to go for this fiery look um, with yellow, crimson. So for this one, I just like put a few stripes of color and tried to blend it a little bit into a gradient. I also made um, a couple crystals. So this one has yellow and pink in it. I definitely could have used more in there because I would have like, the pink kind of disappears. This is one thing about wool and resin. It's hard to use white wool. Very similar to the budgie feathers when you put white in resin, it turns out really clear, but it's just so subtle. And I like that a lot because this crystal is kind of defined by its shape. It's pretty because it's a crystal, so it doesn't really need that much inside of it. And wool is kind of perfect for these things. Yellow, blue, and pink. And the final thing that I made with wool, I also did this fiery color look. It kind of looks like a planet. Looks like Saturn, doesn't it? Like the gradients that it creates are, oops. <laughs> The gradients that it creates are just so natural and it blends so well. Oh. I could look at this for days. It looks like there's like a little universe in there. I don't know if it's picking up on camera too much, but in real life, the way that the light reflects off of the bubbles and the like individual fibers, it really mimics like actual glitter, but it's a really good organic substitute for that because it's not glitter and you don't have to worry about glitter pollution or microplastics getting into the environment. So I think it's like a really good substitute. And I think that I will definitely be using using wool for like backgrounds and accent colors and like certain pieces, uh, especially in coasters, because I think that turned out pretty successfully. Uh, but anyways, thank you for watching and have a good day.